All right. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Columbia Summit featuring Google for Education 2.0, as John would call it. Uh, my name is Monica Isabel Martinez, and we're kicking off. You know I'm back, like I never left. Another spread, another step. Another day, another breath. We're chasing dreams. The North are strong. So once again, welcome everyone to the Columbia Summit uh, featuring Google for Education. Another Saturday, uh, we have a couple of folks here for you uh, on the screen um, that are going to be sharing some an info here in just a second. Really quick again, for those of you who I don't know, my name is Monica Isabel Martinez. I am your host for today and I will also be presenting um, throughout. So hopefully I'll see you in some sessions. Here to do the introduction from CNG is John Parker, Director of Educational Technology and Innovation. John, take it away. Oh, John, we lost your audio. Ah, we lost John. Okay, maybe he'll pop in here in just a second. But I definitely want to do a shout out and a thank you uh, to CNG for hosting this event once again. Uh, they've been doing this for quite some time. Those of you who've been around uh, maybe are already on your fifth <laughs> uh, version of this event. Uh, so welcome everybody. And we know we have some guests as well from other schools that have joined outside of uh, CNG. So welcome to you all as well. Una cordial bienvenida a todos los que están con nosotros hoy día. Eh, sabemos que aparte de los que están escuchando y los que están aquí con nosotros del colegio CNG, que también hay otros eh, docentes que vienen de otros colegios. Así que bienvenidos. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Y gracias a CNG porque ellos han tenido este evento ya por varios años. Así que de seguro que algunos de ustedes han estado con nosotros ya por varios años. Así que bienvenidos. De nuevo, gracias por estar con nosotros. Okay, vamos adelante entonces. All right, so really quick shout out as well to my colleagues and friends over at Nivela. We've got some presenters, Patti and Oscar, that are presenting on behalf of Nivela. So just a quick shout out to them, to my good friends, Juan de Luca, uh, Federico Centeno, um, lovely friends. Uh, I'm sure some of you already know them and just wanted to do a shout out to them as well. All right, so let's cover a couple of quick event details. You will be using the chat to ask questions and to post any comments. Right now, you've got the YouTube chat that you're using for the opening. We'll use this same platform for the closing. But for all of the sessions, we are going to be using Google Meet. And inside of Google Meet, there is also a chat feature where you'll be able to ask questions and post your comments. We will have five minutes between sessions. And very quickly here, I want us to jump into the program so that I can show you what to expect and what you'll be doing as you move between each session. So again, we're kicking off the keynote right where we're at here today. And then uh, at nine o'clock, the sessions will start. And when you go to the schedule, you'll notice that um, there are links to every um, session that includes um, what the session's about. So if you want to learn a little more description about it, you'll click on those links there where it has the title and the speaker name. All of those are clickable links. Again, they take you to a Google Doc to learn more information about those sessions. The grade level is posted there as well on the screen. 
And then you also have the skill level, the apps that are going to be covered, and you may even see more stuff. And then the language the sessions are being held in. So definitely look, look at that to make sure it's um, based on your language preference. And then lastly, the link to join the Google Meet session. So you have to click on these links to be able to jump in to those sessions. Now, you won't be able to jump into them until uh, we kick off at 9. Um, but just uh, really quick, just wanted to show you how the schedule works. As you move through, you have to keep going back into the schedule, find what you're looking for, click to join those sessions. Reminder that when you're in the sessions and the sessions have ended, make sure you close those tabs and then come back to the schedule here and then jump into those links. Now, for those of you who are not on the schedule yet, check your email. I sent you the link so that you can come directly to the schedule or you can also go to the link that you see there on um, the screen. So that's, there's that bit.ly link down at the bottom. It is case sensitive. So the only capital letters there are the C and the P. Everything else is um, lowercase. All right, you guys, so I'm going to do a little switcheroo here and hand it over to our keynote speaker this morning. So let me stop sharing my screen. I see John in here. I'm just going to pop him in. John, if you want to say hello to everyone. Certainly. Thank you, Monica. Uh, sorry, the joys of technology, right? Welcome yes. To everyone. We're really excited that you're joining us. We had such a successful Google Summit last year where we really differentiated the level of support for teachers. Teachers were able to get what they needed in this uh, type of a kind of virtual conference setting. And so welcome. We hope today is going to be fantastic. We have, uh, I know Monica has set up a lot of fantastic speakers. And so I'm excited. I hope you will be as well, you know, sit back, find a comfortable setting, grab a cup of coffee and away we go. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much, John. Thanks for being here uh, at the opening as well. We'll see you later throughout the day. Thanks, John. All right, everyone. So I'm going to bring up Donnie here in just a second. I just want to do a really quick intro. So Donnie Piercy is our keynote speaker. He is a good friend of mine. Um, goodness, we've known each other for quite some time now. And I'm excited to have him um, speak to you guys and to kick us off uh, this morning. Um, a little bit about Donnie. For those of you, well, obviously a lot of you don't know him. Uh, so uh, Donnie is, by the way, the 2021 Kentucky Teacher of the Year. So huge congrats to that. That's obviously a big accomplishment. Uh, and I'm sure he'll tell you a little bit about his adventures and his life as he's been uh, the Teacher of the Year. He is also, aside from that, um, he is a fifth grade teacher in Le Lexington, Kentucky. And I think what, Donnie, are you on year 15, I think, of teaching now? I've kind of reached that age where I've lost track. You know, I, just have to <laughs> okay. do, I do subtraction every time to figure out what year I started. So somewhere in year 15, we'll, we'll leave it gotcha. at that. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So um, aside from teaching, being in the classroom and the at the elementary level, he's also been the recipient of the National Geographic Teacher fellowship where he had a chance to go to Antarctica. I don't know if he's going to be telling the stories about that, but if you get a chance, definitely ask him about that particular adventure. I'll tell you this. He jumped into the freezing cold water at one moment. So just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, Donnie is also the North America lead for the Google Earth um, Education Experts Network. So Definitely look out for his session on Google Earth or anything that works around um, Google Earth and maps and things like that. Um, and I'm going to just let Donnie take over and I'm going to get off the screen, you guys, so that you can. Well, it looks like Monica tried to get off the screen and accidentally kicked herself out of the call, which is wonderful. You know, I, I, this uh, is definitely such a cool opportunity. Hablo inglés. Um, but buenos dias desde Kentucky. Um, so a little more about me, like Monica mentioned. Uh, my name is Donnie Piercy. I do teach fifth grade. I've been teaching somewhere for about 15 years-ish, somewhere in that range. I started in 2006, 2007. So if you do some math, it's about my 15th year um, of, of teaching. Um, I do teach fifth grade. It's something that I've done. Um, I kind of stumbled into it. I'm going to share a little bit more about my story. And one thing that Monica, um, when I was chatting with her and uh, talking with Monica, about this summit, about this event. I said, well, what kind of message do the teachers at CVG and in Colombia, do, do, they, do they want? 
um, you know, what kind of message do you feel like would best be served? Um, and so from talking to her, I know a lot of us, thanks to the, the pandemic, like we've really kind of dived into this, this, ed, this educational technology world where we've kind of got the basics down, but we're kind of looking for, okay, what is the next big thing when it comes to technology? How can we take all of these tools um, that we've been playing with for the last two years? And for some of us, it might be our first time. For others of us, maybe we've been living in this, you know, this technology world for, for our entire teaching career. But how can we take those tools and start to um, bring creativity back into our classroom? So a little bit more about me. You know, I have been teaching fifth grade. I currently teach fifth grade at Stonewall Elementary School um, in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, thanks to uh, Google Earth, it's, uh, you know, I can go ahead and grab this cool shot. It looks like something that I took from a drone. Um, but uh, this is just a Google Earth image right here. I always like to share photos from my actual classroom. Um, one, because hey, it lets people know that I'm actually a, a classroom teacher, but it also hopefully provides some of you with a little bit of inspiration for maybe some ideas. I love exploring. I love um, the idea of uh, letting my students know that there is a world beyond their their class, you know, beyond the classroom that they are, are in. Um, and I've always found that maps are a great way to, to do that. And some of my maps that I have are ones that my great grandfather gave to me. I actually found it at his house uh, when he passed away about 20 years ago. I kind of held on to them. Others are just ones that I've had students accumulate, but um, I always like to decorate my classroom with them because it gives them a glimpse of the world. Um, and I can always keep it up and shift it around and um, I don't know. It's just, just a fun way to decorate my classroom. Um, I have been teaching, like Monica mentioned, for about 15 years. Um, you know, while I love technology and, you know, when you're at a Google for Education Summit, uh, a lot of times that, that, you know, you tend to have that technology focus. But, you know, I've always, when I'm incorporating technology into my classroom, I do it. I try to do it in a way that... Um, I try to do it in a way that instead of just using it for the sake of using it, um, I try to use it where it either can redefine or modify or augment um, a lesson that could be done just with pencil and paper. Um, but with that being said, uh, because I teach in elementary school, um, you know, I teach grade five, fifth grade. Um, I still get the joys of going outside and playing American football um, with the students every single day. Um, although my dad uh, got me addicted to uh, football, uh, you know, he, he has me follow the Premier League. I'm sorry. But um, so I do play a little bit of soccer. We call soccer. You call football. Um, we're, we're Americans. We're, we're a little strange like that. Um, I have been teaching long enough. Um, that I feel like I've gone through all the fun fads that tend to come into education. Um, whether it was when I first started teaching, kids were just discovering these things called pogs. I have no idea if pogs made their way down to Bogota, Colombia or not. You can throw that in the chat. I still don't know, actually know how to play this game. Um, we had these things in the United States called silly bands. Don't know if those made those where those way their way down to Colombia, but kids were like obsessed with these things. We had fidget spinners or fidget cubes, whatever those were. Kids seemed to love them. My one of my favorite things I ever found a student had. So you know, I tend to like superhero movies and things like that. So uh, one year I ended up taking this. It was a I am Groot um, uh, fidget cube off of a student. These are really big now. They're called poppets. I have no idea why kids like them, but they'll just put them on their corners of their desks. But, you know, I've had quite the ex experience in the classroom from my first year teaching to now in 2000, I almost said 2001, 2021. Um, oh, good. Thank you, Carla. Glad to know that, that the poppets have made their way around the world and even down to 
Columbia. Um, but here, you know, I have, and I'll share a little bit about this later, but, you know, I have a uh, family at home. My, my wife and I, we have three kids and a dog that you'll probably hear barking downstairs in a minute. But, you know, for seven hours a day, I am Mr. Piercy. P-I-E-R-C-E-Y. And you would think that that would be a, an easy name to spell. It is literally seven letters. But um, it is not. It's actually, I've learned, and maybe as a classroom teacher, you've stumbled across this too with your last name. Um, no matter how, you know, I, I've put my name as like a spelling word. I, I always, I have a collection of my favorite ways that my last name has been misspelled. This one was fun. Student wrote me a little, <laughs> a little note saying, oh, Mr. Pierce, this was around holiday time. And what's great about this one is she realized that she had misspelled my last name. And on the inside, she says, your, yes, I know, Y-O-U, should be Y-O-U apostrophe. -E. The best treats in the world. P.S. I'm sorry, I spelled your name wrong, Piercy. And fun fact, that's also misspelled there because of course it would be. Um, sometimes, you know, the teachers, students, the teachers, kids, I don't know if in Columbia it, you have the same effect, but, you know, I've, the teachers, kids, I have two that are at my school that I'm at now, but, you know, they tend to roam the hallway after school and go into kids, uh, teachers' classrooms and write r random things on the board. This is my favorite one, but again, they misspell my name, so it's all good. Uh, we had a game called the Oregon Trail that we play from time to time. And of course, my students misspelled my name, so I just give up. But, you know, what this, this keynote this morning is about, um, it's about the idea of how technology um, can make your classroom, your space, or your school just different. And not different in the fact of, of using technology just for the sake of, of using it, but instead, how can we incorporate technology to bring about change that just makes students feel welcomed and more importantly, helps them become the learners that we want them to be? Um, you know, I'm going to share a few examples kind of throughout this morning, but, you know, the, just things that I've done over the last 15-ish years. Um, but, you know, if there's one thing that, that I've learned, right, one kind of creed that I've adopted over the past 15 years of teaching is that, you know, the teachers who are the most successful, the ones who students just seem to pay attention to, are those teachers that just tend to do things differently. You know, in, in education, there's a lot of room for routine. And, and again, I, I teach elementary school, so I, I, I know that routine is important. You have to practice lining up, practice walking even into a room quietly and sitting down. Those are all important practices that you need to incorporate. However, if every single class is the same every single day across the board, if there's no room for what, um, you know, what I like to call surprise and delight, then uh, student boredom can tend to get off the charts um, and it can be a real downer uh, on a student's day. So, you know, I, I like to think that my, my life is a, uh, is a, uh, I guess a, a microcosm of this idea of doing things differently. I graduated from undergrad. So I graduated from university in 2004, um, actually graduated with a, uh, from a small, throw it into the chat because every now and then you'll find somebody who's heard of it. Just a small liberal arts college here in Kentucky called Asbury College now known as Asbury University, but um, graduated from Asbury College with a degree in theology um, and then learned very, very quickly that uh, you can't really do much with a theology degree. Um, so I, I actually ended up going back to school um, and got certified to teach. And in 2007, I got my first job teaching elementary school out of school I actually visited just yesterday. I'm called Simmons Elementary in Versailles, Kentucky. Yes, I know that that is pronounced Versailles, but we are Kentucky, and uh, we're going to pronounce things the way that, that we want. But uh, you can say it with me, Versailles. It's not Versailles, it's Versailles. We also have a, by the way, just, just for fun, in Kentucky, we also have a Frankfurt we have a Paris, we have a London, 
we have even why not we even have a baghdad because we we sometimes come up with the best names that we can think of i actually live in lexington which is named after lexington in massachusetts but live in versailles kentucky and you know when i i taught in versailles kentucky rather and and i remember after i got hired after i got hired from my for my first job i remember and maybe you remember this too spending all summer prepping my classroom um and i actually have a photo of what my first classroom looked like and i, I you know this was before i had an iphone this was taken on like an old like an old old like not it was a digital camera but one you had to plug in you know um to you know like pull the disc out on it but uh it was uh it's an old old camera let's let's leave it at that um but i love looking at this photo one because i actually still have a lot of these uh, you know, things in my classroom today. Um, and it's always kind of a nice reminder to go back and remember like where I started from. I, I feel like as a teacher, you know, a lot of times we, 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 you know, one of the most important things that we can do as an educator is reflect on where we've been and how we've changed. But more importantly, sometimes it's how, you know, what practices have we kept over the, over the course of our teaching career? Um, but here's the deal, right? So I spent all summer, all summer prepping my classroom. And then in August, we'll, we'll call it August, you know, the, around the start of August, we start school a little bit early down here. It was the night before the first day of school, and I still was not ready because turns out um, <laughs> you need these things called lesson plans. And, you know, you have to figure out like, oh, how am I going to teach? Right. Um, and so, it's been a, it's been quite a ride, but uh, there was the night before the first day of school, and I still was not ready. And I said, "Well, you know what? I'm going to try to do something a little bit different." And this was 2007, so I'm like, "You know, I'm going to make a classroom website. Why not?" Um, you know, I found out that about at the time I was teaching in rural Kentucky, so about 40-ish percent of my parents, of the, my students and parents, um, had easy access to internet at home. So I was like, eh, you know what, I'll still send home paper copies of stuff, but I'll go ahead and make a, a website. Now, that website does not exist anymore because, you know, it was almost 15 years ago. But, excuse me, there's this really cool site, and I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but it's called the Wayback Machine, like Google this, where if you type in the old an old web address like I did right here, um, it'll actually let you travel back in time and see what a website looked like 10, 15, or even 20 years ago. So a couple of years ago, I went and I said, I wonder if I can find the my old website. And what's super cool is I was actually able to go, and this you can't find this site anymore, but I was actually able to go and find the blog post I made the night before the first day of school the, before my first day of teaching. Now, I'm not going to read it to you. Um, one, because there's a grammar error in here and it always bothers me every time I read it. But more importantly, um, I can kind of go over the gist of it, right? One thing I love, and I, I usually read this before the site, uh, before the start of school every single year. I love reading this because a lot of the same hopes, dreams, and goals that I had for my students, my first class ever back in 2007, I still have those same hopes, dreams, and goals for the classes that I have every single year. Now, that doesn't mean that my practices haven't changed. It doesn't mean that I'm not incorporating new things because Lord knows every year we're, we're adapting and changing. But, you know, it's always a nice reminder for me to reflect and go back and look at how have I grown? How have I changed as, as, a, as a teacher? Um, so anyway, so that first semester of teaching was was pretty not going to lie. Like, I was so excited. But, you know, if you can think back to your first year of teaching, it's fun. But good Lord, you are exhausted every single day. Um, and so that first first semester of teaching, I, I learned two important lessons. Um, the first lesson I learned, um, and again, this is not my desk we can pretend like it is but this, you know it's just a random photo i found um there's really no other way to say it yeah i suck at paperwork uh <laughs> it's just i just do 
Um, it's actually one of the reasons why I started using uh, websites and you know, started to incorporate more technology into my daily classroom practice because it <laughs> eliminated the clutter that was on my desk. Um, but the second lesson, and, and I feel like there's a lot of truth to this, and hopefully this is something that if you've been teaching for a long time, or if, even if this is just your first year teaching, um, it's to really learn to value the time that I spend with my friends and, and my family, especially, um, especially as my, my kids, I've got three, Remember, I've got a two-year-old, a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old as they get older, um, making sure that I take time every single day to spend or to talk with them. Because I think we all know that education, um, education can, it can consume you. Right. So making sure that you set that hard stop sometimes on ourselves just to focus on our mental health is important. But anyway, um, wouldn't be a very good person if I was up here saying, hey, you need to spend time with your family and not give um, three people or at least some people here that uh, are pretty important to me. So if you wouldn't mind, you can type this into the chat if you want, or you can just awkwardly wave at your screen and do it that way. So um, here on the left, this is my son, Hank. If you want, you can type, hi, Hank, or you can wave and say, hola, Hank. That, that's fun. Um, he goes, you know, Henry, but we, we call him Hank. Um, he's seven now. He's a ginger. Here on the right, this is my daughter, Scarlett. Scarlett is 10 now. She's in fourth grade, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, there you go, Monica. And then here in the center, here in the, oops, sorry, do, 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 do. Here we go. Here in the center is my daughter, Ramona. She is two. Now, this photo was taken when she was about a year old. Um, she's making her OMG face, I call. And then one more person I like to introduce you to because she's somebody very special to me. Is my This is my smoking hot wife, Dr. Raven Piercy. She's, she's something special. We've actually been married for 17 years this, this past summer. So, um, And by the way, I know a lot of you, uh, just because we're, yeah, one, I do not speak Spanish, ne habla espanol, um, but thanks to this thing called Google Translate, um, I, I was interested because my original plan was for this keynote was to go like every other slide, throw in a Google Translate phrase to try to get the message across. Um, and just for kicks, I was like, well, let's throw smoking hot wife um, into, <laughs> into, into Google Translate a few times, translate it back and forth. And uh, I absolutely have to share what it settled on. So anyway, one more time, smoking hot wife, Google Translate, go back and forth between English a few times. And of course, it settles on mi esposa es en fuego. Yeah, so she's she's literally literally on fire. So Google Translate is great for a lot of things, but yeah, <laughs> I see you, Steve. I see you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> it definitely helps a lot, but you know, if your wife's on fire, you should put her out. Anyway, um, anyway, so my, my second term of, of teaching, things got a lot better. And I got an email, my, my second term of teaching that completely changed my practice. Um, and so Basically said, again, I'm not going to read the letter to you, but I was teaching in Versailles, Kentucky. I'm in Versailles, Versailles, Kentucky at the time. Um, and it, the email basically said that this person was a primary school teacher in Versailles, or Versailles, France. And she was trying to do a like an exchange program with, um, with other Versailles around the world and was wondering if I sent her some stuff, if she, you know, that they could send something back. And keep in mind, this is my first year of, of teaching, right? So um, I start to look and keep in mind, I was first year teacher, right? And I noticed a few things. One, it's coming from an AOL account, right? Secondly, I'm just like, it just seems to... It just seemed too, too it, it seemed too good to be true, right? First year teacher, you know, my 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 signals are going off. You know, it just seemed like a scam. You know, if you remember the 1950s TV show Lost in Space, I was like like Danger Will Robinson. You know, like I'd seen these Nigerian print schemes before, and in my mind, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm about to become a part 
of one of these things. But anyway, so my, I told my class about it and they, they were interested, believe it or not, even though we lived in, they lived in Versailles, Kentucky, a lot of them had never even knew that they were named after Versailles, France. So we looked it up and uh, we learned that Versailles and Versailles, um, you know, so here's Versailles, Versailles, Kentucky, Versailles, Versailles, Kentucky. Um, we did that and we learned that we have a few things in common. First, Versailles has a castle or a palace and Versailles actually has a, a castle. And, and that was pretty much it. All right. That was pretty much it for the similarities between Versailles and Versailles, Kentucky. But my students were persistent. They're like, look, can we, can we, can we, you know, there's a group of four or five girls I remember that were like, can we send them a letter, please, 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 please. We want to do it. I'm like, look, I don't have time. I'm struggling to keep my head above water. Tell you what, if you four girls want to write this class a letter, um, I will send it for you. Um, I didn't even bother proofreading it, um, you know, like making some edits on it. All I remember was, I, I, again, I didn't have a camera at the time. I just know that I should have taken a picture of it. But in a nutshell, this is what it looked like. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. And by the way, my my name was was misspelled because, of course, it probably was. All right. Anyway, so I also threw in there an old graying T-shirt, you know, threw in some beef jerky because why not? Um, but we sent the letter and then I went back to teaching. Um, and to be honest, a few weeks went by. Um, and, you know, in my head, I'm like, see, I told y'all. I told y'all it, you know, this was this was a scam. Y'all wasted your time and we lost some good beef jerky and, and, a, and a gray and a T-shirt. Right. So one day I'm up in the teacher's lounge and uh, I hear over the over the intercom. Uh, Miss Chris, please come up to the front office and I, I head on up there and find this. And in addition to this gigantic envelope, I still have this by the way. It's, I meant to grab it this morning. It's in my classroom at school. But in addition to this, <laughs> in addition to this uh, package, uh, there was also four large boxes of French chocolate, flyers, treats, goodies, and um, again, I'm not someone who uses a lot of bad language, but I remember in the staff lounge or in the front office, vis you know, verbally saying, yeah, because it turns out there really was a school in Versailles, France, and every single student had written in English, mind you, um, these lovely acrostic poems about their names, telling us where they were born, where they were from, in cursive, right? Which my students, when they heard the word cursive, it was like a foreign language to them. Um, so anyway, long story short, I, I kind of settled upon something as, as a teacher. And I decided right then and there that I was never going to let my students um, miss another opportunity. Um, and well, it was around that time that I was also watching the TV show 30 Rock. I don't know if you all had the TV show 30 Rock in, in Colombia, but there is a great quote that um, I feel like exemplifies um, <laughs> my classroom creed. Now, in, in the United States, we have this, uh, this week, every year we have a TV show called... Uh, we have a, a TV channel called the Discovery Channel. And on the Discovery Channel, once a year, we have something called Shark Week. I don't know if you know about Shark Week, but it's the one week every year where it is nothing but shark programs all the time. Now, as me, living in Kentucky, I'm obsessed with it. And it was around that time when I was watching the TV show 30 Rock that I stumbled across this quote. Okay, so here's some advice I wish I would have got when I was your age. Live every week like a shark week. <laughs> the great Tracy Jordan, Tracy Morgan. Awesome. I love it. And here's the deal. I actually adopted that as my class mantra where I was like, you know what? It's something special. It's something where when it's going on, 
Um, you know, it, it's what you're focused on. And yeah, you still have your regularly scheduled program on the Discovery Channel during Shark Week. But every single night, every single day, there's something awesome to look forward to. And, I, you know, again, it's kind of a silly quote, but I feel like the message that teachers can take from it is still there. And by the way, um, but what really makes Shark Week stand out, it's this idea of doing things differently, right? And ultimately, like, you know, this whole keynote, it's about being creative. Um, it's about that idea that, um, you know, that creativity matters. And so um, I, I wanted to share just a few things that I've done in my classroom that are different, things that I try to do to make sure that every single week it's like Shark Week in my classroom. I, I used to do in my classroom, and I'll share in a, a workshop a little later today how I um, how I, I do this nowadays, but I used to run a classroom bank where every single Friday I would print off fake money with my face on it, and I would give kids like their weekly paycheck, like physical money that they could use for our class store. Did that for a while and then realized that kids were basically, you know, stealing it from each other and, you know, it was not good. So I stumbled across this site, mykidsbank.org, that actually lets you set up a free online bank account for every single student, not only in your built in your classroom, but also in your school. And what's cool about it, it does automatic direct deposit, right? So I didn't have to worry about printing it off anymore. Um you know, one year I, uh, I had some students who were pretty artsy, um, that loved to draw, loved to paint. Um, and so that, you know, in my classroom, we've got these big giant windows. They're about, I would say about eight feet across and about nine or 10 feet high. They, they would look right out into the, you know, uh, where parents pick up their kids every day. Um, and so one year I had some students that were really artistic and they said, hey, Mr. Piercy, you know, can we, we love to paint. Could we put something up on your classroom window? I was like, sure. So we actually had a drawing competition. Um, every single student who was interested drew what they wanted on the classroom window. We voted on the, the favorites, on the finalists. And then once we picked the top five that everybody liked, um, we went and we painted, and again, this was, I am not like a huge Game of Thrones fan, but you know, I had some students who love dragons one year. So we ended up painting a gigantic dragon on our window. Um, you know, we even have class elections in my classroom every year, but instead of making it a popularity contest, like we have students go and we talk about, you know, what makes a good um, election slogan, um, where I teach students how to do digital or in this case, physical design. And you'll find posters plastered around um, the entire school um, where students will come up with a slogan, design, and it's always a lot of fun. And I always make them do their designs um, in Google Slides first before um, they start to go ahead and either hand make them or just print them off. And my all time favorite one, <laughs> was this one where she put it right above a water fountain, free drinks on me, vote so-and-so, made me laugh. Um, you know, I, I I stumbled across this. I don't even know if you can buy these anymore, but we, uh, you know, we had a couple of 3D printers in my school um, and uh, kind of stumbled across this. And it was, you know, said, hey, if you like 3D printing, how would you like to 3D print pancakes? I'm like, oh, okay, tell me more about that. So found this thing called a pancake bot where instead of like 3D printing in plastic, students on their Chromebooks could actually design something that they wanted to be 3D printed. And instead of putting plastic in, you put batter, like pancake batter into this. And it actually ended up making um, whatever it was that they designed. And this was the best T-Rex pancake you're ever going to see. We've had poetry nights and even around Halloween, um, you know, sometimes kids will come to school dressed up as whatever that, you know, Halloween costumes sometimes are a little bit iffy, but um, 
instead of having my students come to school dressed as book characters and kind of instead of having my students come to school dressed as um, you know, like blood dripping off of everything. Um, I always assign my students every year a difficult word in the dictionary, um, and it's their job to come to school dressed as that word. Um, and so when they, you know, they'll carry a sign around with their name on it, and then throughout the day, teachers and staff in the building will um, have to ask them, oh, what's your word? Tell me why you're dressed as you are. We have a big parade every year where their students are dressed up as their word. If you're going to do that, by the way, Dictionary Day is a lot of fun. Little pro tip, resist the urge to assign certain words to certain kids. It's like, oh, yeah, you. Yeah, you are lethargic. You are sleepy. You know, um, it's kind of kind of fun. All right. But here's the deal, right? You know, this is a, is a tech conference. So I wanted to share a, a little bit about how you can use technology to, to do the same thing. And I'm going to finish up here with this story. Like Monica mentioned, in 2013, I was actually given the chance to become a Google certified teacher. Um, now it's called a Google certified innovator and was actually invited to head on down to Sydney, Australia. Um, got to go to the Googleplex there. And of course, like when I got my photo taken, my eyes were closed because of course it would be, right? But when I came back, um, I was given a chance, this was 2013, 2014, to try Google Glass. Now, if you don't remember what Google Glass was, it was the best way to describe it would be a computer that you wear on your face. Um, and it looked like so much fun. And then I actually put it on and, you know... Um, you know, you can take pictures with it. And I just looked like a total goof. Came with these sunshades that looked really, made me look tough. But, you know, I took it to a conference. And uh, I think my friend Todd's face here kind of sums up like what he thought of Google Glass. And, you know, I was ready to return the dang things. And then I took it to class. Um, and I decided to let my students become Google Glass Explorers. Every single one of them got a chance to do it um, for 28 days straight. We kind of passed it around. And my class felt like they were living in the future. Yes, I did have awkward photos like this one. But to be honest, it ended up being a lot of fun. And it was something that completely changed my practice as a, a teacher. And um, like Monica mentioned, um, you know, I've had a lot of cool experiences over the course of my career. Um, you know, I got the chance to travel with National Geographic to Antarctica. I even had some National Geographic explorers respond to some of my students' questions on Flipgrid. Um, I even, um, you know, have written a book on virtual reality in the classroom. And I had some students that mapped out our community in rural Kentucky using a 3D camera. We added those 3D images, those 360 degree images to Google Maps. It's been quite the journey. Um, and throughout this day, whether you come to come of some of my sessions, whether you go to some of the other sessions by some of the other amazing um, educators that are here at this conference, um, you know, you are going to, to, to be wowed. So thank you so much for giving me the chance to let you, to share with you all this morning. Um, I'd love to connect with you online. If you're on Twitter, I'm at Mr. Piercy. Don't forget to spell my name right. But thank you all so much. And go ahead and close this out. And I actually don't know. Oh, Monica, you're back. I'm back. Okay. All back. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I know I cut myself off earlier, which is too funny, right? Because usually someone else will cut you off, but I totally just cut myself off. Um, thank you so much, Donnie, for kicking us off. Um, I love the stories throughout the year. I'm sure you've got plenty more that you could um, that you could share, but just love seeing sort of the, the journey um, that you've been on over the last um, 15 years. So once again, thank you so much for kicking us off. Everyone, uh, have a great, amazing day. We will be meeting back here, not at this link, but there is a different link uh, in the schedule. I just put the schedule link in the chat. You want to go to that schedule. 
Um, it's that, that spreadsheet to be able to get to your session. So go take a look at the schedule. We will see everyone in about four minutes starting in the different sessions. Have a great day of learning. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.